is a show that focuses on the person behind the brony. I'm your host, Osaka Jack. Please sit back and relax as we talk to this week's guest brony. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Into the Spotlight. This is your host, Osaka Jack. And with me today, I have someone you may recognize from her deviant art or many uh, song collaborations she's done, Miss Feather. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you this evening? I'm really good. How are you? Oh, not too shabby at all. <laughs> How are things on your side of the world? I guess my side, too. well, no, we're in different hemispheres, northern, southern, yeah. Well, we're closer than other people in the world. <laughs> yes, we have similar time zones. Hmm. But yeah, it's good down here. It's been very hot, but that's been good. I enjoy the heat. Oh, I enjoy the winter, so we'll just keep it as it is. We'll both be happy. <laughs> well, for anyone who doesn't know, um, can you describe what do you do? Um. Well, I've been a brony musician. So um, I usually just do vocals, just vocals, um, for a lot of different collaborations, some of my own ponifications since um, June of well, last year now, 2012. Oh, yes. Um, yes, yeah, so I have to remember to say that. Um, <laughs> and um, I also contribute with artwork. So I do a lot of commissions and album arts and things like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Now, um I have to ask, the name Feather, where did that come from? Did you um, did you have this nickname before you decided upon Pegasus, or was it just... What, what was the uh, origin of this name? Well, it was it was created when I created my OC. Okay. Um, because I, I chose the Pegasus because, well, I have an affinity for birds. I love oh. birds. <laughs> um, I own a lot of birds. I've bred birds. Um, they're probably my most favorite thing in the world. And um, I really liked the um, the idea of flying. And so I, I, I quite I quite love wings. I love, and of course, feathered wings. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my favorite character is Fluttershy. And she has such a soft and gentle personality. And I wanted that for my character too. And feathers, of course, are soft and gentle and light. And mm -hmm. I just thought it fitted so well. <laughs> Works for me, sure. I <laughs> I guess either feather or pillow would have worked. <laughs> pillow. <laughs> I can see that working. For, I want to make a character called Pillow yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> she can be my sleepy time character. <laughs> there we go, Pillow. <laughs> <laughs> and we would we would have to do something on the alliance of uh, uh, your character Feather feeds Pillow because Feather stuffs Pillow. Pillow oh stuff with feathers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> mm. But uh, your strongest area, or not strongest, but uh, one of your more prominent areas is music. Um, for someone who has not heard any of her stuff, what would be a good uh, introduction into your music? Which which item would you say? Or which song? Mm, I suppose my most popular song has been um, Mad Mares. Okay. Um, it's a parody that was originally written by um, Ember, but um, I did a cover of it and it, it did really well. But um, I suppose my favorite personal song for me um, mm -hmm. would have to be Dashy Mine or Apples of My Eye, a collaboration with Rhyme Flow and Legion. Okay, all right. So all right. Either of those two. One's a ponification and one's a collaboration, and they're kind of my areas. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're both very sad and very sweet, which is also my area. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I like to feed off the tears of bronies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's a yeah, that's actually kind of cool. Okay, <laughs> yeah, Mad Wares, that's a Mad World parody, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, did did you go with the original Mad World, the uh, peppy one, or the slower one that came out uh, more recently? I went with the Donnie Darko version. <laughs> I would assume <laughs> the so. The Gary Jules one. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a great song, but I would be curious to hear your 80s pop version as well. <laughs> I had to listen to it, and the Tears for Fears version, I was like, oh, I do, I'm not sure if my voice would fit with that. I, I think I, I suit better with the um, the Gary Jules version, but I would like to try it just for fun, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be fun. I, I always appreciate it if an artist uh, takes one of their songs and just changes the tempo and sees if they can sing it that way again. It's just, often, they cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, That's I would fun. be intimidated by the idea. I don't know yeah. if I do it. 
Ah, but um, so that one is uh, more of a parody, a brony, uh, bronification. Uh, yeah, was my eye was an yeah. original song, though. Yes, yes, that was that was an original. And what was the uh, inspiration on that? Um, for Apples of My Eye, that was um, basically the story behind um, Applejack's parents from Granny Smith's point of view. Mm-hmm. And I must say, I kind of delved into my own um, personal tragedy to mm-hmm. get the lyrics and get the emotions for that song because mm-hmm. I've had a very blessed life, but I have had one quite traumatic thing in my life and I won't go into it but um just uh, the death of a loss of you know a loved one and um I I used that inspiration to um you know come up with the emotions behind it because I I like things to be raw and genuine Mm -hmm. sure sure yeah it's uh, I don't know I suppose that if somebody is just going for surface look then most emotions could be faked but if you really want to get the true emotion, you have to have experienced it at some point. I think so. And and I be, I think I have this thing where I don't like to cheat. If I haven't felt it, I don't like to sing it. Yeah. So I, I like things to be genuine and I like authenticity. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that one does well. Now, uh, the artwork for Apples of My Eye, um, was that you? Yes, that was. Oh, my. How long did that take? Cause that is a really just, uh, it's a beautiful picture. Um, probably, probably just a night's, a good night's work. So okay. I probably usually sit down at about, you know, five or six and then at about 11, 11.30 I'm finishing up. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I usually sit down and if it's an artwork that um, is connected to a song, usually I'll just play the song over and over again. I'll just sit from start to finish, do it in one go. Usually mm-hmm. commissions will take a lot longer, but right. for album art, I have that one process. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. I know that um, uh, director Thiessen, Thiessen, uh, Jason Thiessen, uh, was the uh, one of the directing uh, artists on um, the Winter Wrap-Up song, but his wife was storyboarding the actual song for it. So I know on the uh, DVD commentary, he mentions how he would spend all day at work listening to the song over and over and over again. And then he'd go home and his wife would be doing the same thing, listening to the song over and over and over again to get the storyboarding (laughs) right. (laughs) So he could not escape it the entire time he was working on it. It's so catchy, though. How could you get sick of it? (laughs) Well, and, you know, right uh, very close after that, uh, Daniel Ingram is uh, speaking of it. And he said, Daniel Ingram said he had about six or seven different versions of the song or different uh, melodies. And he kept just, you know, eliminating one at a time until he got the one that caught in his mind most. It's like, well, oh, there you go. Clever. Yeah. yeah clever. Good idea. Huh. Yeah. So he finds the one that's catchiest to him and then spreads it to the rest of us, infecting our minds forever. Good idea. Yeah. That is smart. Mm-hmm. I will adopt that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, now every fan of yours and fan of his is going to be, so can we hear the other versions? Would that be cool? <laughs> like, oh, that's other... true. You'd have to make so many versions. Oh, <laughs> I'm a little bit lazy. <laughs> uh, efficient, yeah. shall we say. <laughs> efficient is a better That's better. I yeah. think I'll go with that. That's a much more kind of... <laughs> What kind of word to use? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what is your uh, preferred uh, type of music? I mean, we said slow and mournful, um, or slow and emotion. Um, do you prefer just the sad songs, or the slower songs, or uh, some of the faster ones? Um, I suppose it's not so much that I prefer them, but I okay. feel they're my strengths. Oh, okay. But because um, I don't like to just sit at home and cry all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm quite peppy. Um, so I, I do enjoy faster stuff. Oh, um, really, peppy? <laughs> you would never have guessed. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, the the song I released recently in a collaboration with um, Andy and Replacer, mm. um, "Until the Sun," that's been doing quite well. Um, and that's really upbeat. So <laughs> that was new for me, but um, I enjoyed it. So I think I'm branching out to some different areas. So. I'm enjoying that. <laughs> hey, 
That's great. Oh yeah, that was, uh, I think Aviators just did a remix of that, didn't they? Yes, I just saw it today. I, I, I was like looking at, to check for comments so I could reply on my phone. And then I was looking through um, the one on Andy's channel and then I saw it and I was like, oh, Aviators. <laughs> and I had to borrow, I like went around and I borrowed headphones for a friend so I could listen to it. <laughs> and I was like, ah. So I had a little fangirl moment. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm really excited because um, I'm actually, after this interview, I'm about to record the final vocals for um, our collaboration because me oh. and Aviators are doing a collaboration. So I'm really excited about Wonderful. that. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Are they challenging you with a fast beat or are we still going with uh, your strength? <laughs> um, it's... Or perhaps you can't talk think, about it at this point. I think it's different. I think it's different. I think it's a little bit different. Okay, okay. But, um, yeah, well, well, I think we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? <laughs> yes, very much. Chances are, by the time the interview comes out, it will have been released. But still, just in case. Just in case, perhaps. No spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> well, voice is obviously your strength. Uh, do you play any instruments? Oh, I'm terrible. I can't, I can't play anything. Oh, really? I, I, I failed music in school. They like barely, like, they're like, you're <laughs> terrible. I'm so horrible. I got put on a triangle and even the teacher was like, okay, just sit down. Just, just watch now. <laughs> I was like, okay, all right. I'm terrible. I know this. <laughs> oh, I am shocking. I like, I can't, I can't read music. Hmm. I do everything by ear. I'm not musically trained or anything. I'm like, uh it's way out of my capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's a big no then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> big no. Like, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, have there been any um, songs that you've just had problem getting the melody down? Um, I, I understand. I don't read music at all. I can sing a little bit, but not you know, uh, to your extent. But have you ever had a song where you're like, I, I need help. I can't get this. Oh my god, all the time. Oh. Okay. <laughs> all like every like every time I'm like, can you give me guide vocals? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I do everything by by ear. Right. So people are like, do this with these notes, and they like send me like A B, and they're like, they're just letters to me. <laughs> can you can you please send me an MP3 of your vocals, <laughs> even if they're just humming it, I <laughs> to get the melody. But um, yeah, I think people slowly learn that I am not musical. <laughs> I'm no. <laughs> well, perhaps think... we'll say not conventionally musical. Yes, yes, not trained or educated in in the conventional way, and I think people expect me to be, and then they're sorely mistaken. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, no, no, I need guide vocals and help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there um, is there some song that you'd like to cover but haven't had the chance yet? Because I know that you're rather busy at this point. I think most of your uh, schedule is quite there, filled. There's, um, I really want to um, cover For Dashie by Joe the Loaf. I, okay. I love that song. Mm. Um, and I, I kind of got a rough recording down, but um, I want to I wanna make sure it's perfect because mm -hmm. um, he's a friend of mine and I really like his stuff, so I want to do it justice. Um, and, yeah, there's, there's a couple of other things, but... Um, yeah, it's mostly just collaborations at the moment. I haven't really had a chance to think about anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot quite No, that it's much. all right. I just realized how neglected I've been of covers because there's been so many songs that I've been like, oh, I just, I'd love to give my give my spin on that, give it a try. Yeah. Because there's not that many. Well, there are there are a few now out there, but there weren't that many um, female vocalists to start off with. So it was always nice to hear the female version of it. But now mm. there's... Lots of female vocalists, so I'm not alone. <laughs> it's good. Yes, very true, very true. <laughs> when uh, do you recall what was the uh, first Brony song you did? The first Brony song I ever collaborated on. Yeah, or did it um, any in any uh, style? Oh well, the first <laughs> and terrible little thing I <laughs> wrote um, was "Hey Big Mac," which is just it's just me singing on my headset. <laughs> Okay. The first video I have, and it's terrible. But <laughs> <laughs> it was just a little song I wrote um, with the Flutter Mac ship because I love those two. Uh -huh. um, not for everyone, I know, but I love them. Well, <laughs> I've, my... I've seen it quite often, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is pretty popular. <laughs> 
But um, my first proper collaboration was with um, Croatia for Rainbow, okay. um, where he's a um, a rapper, and I came and did the um, wrote the uh, the chorus and did the melody and all that and the lyrics and all that for the the chorus and the harmonies and rah rah and did that and mm-hmm. that was kind of my first little shove or should I say big shove into the fandom because that song did really well and hmm. then I kind of went from there. Nice. That's good. Where do you see yourself going in the future with it? Oh, um. Sorry, I hate those questions. <laughs> don't have to answer <laughs> if you don't want to. Oh, I'll try. Um. <laughs> I um, I really just do this for fun. So good I suppose, Yeah, I, I suppose I just I just want to meet and collaborate and do as much as I can with as many people as I can because mm-hmm. I like meeting new people and trying new styles. Because since I am just a vocalist, I can't do instrumentals. I can't do anything. I have trouble writing my own songs mm-hmm. without an instrumental. Um, I have trouble writing melodies. Period. Um, I, I really do rely on other people and for the fact that people are willing to collaborate and, you know, mm-hmm. invite me into their little projects. Like that's, that's so special to me. So I really <laughs> like that. I just want to keep on doing that. <laughs> nice. Have you ever thought of doing like an acapella? Just I a, have, I yeah. have, and I've, I've written like five, but <laughs> I haven't got around to recording any of them because <laughs> of the collaborations. <laughs> Hey, so, no, that's fine. Do what you want to do before you do, you know, things on the side. Yeah, Absolutely. They're sitting there waiting for me. I have I have even done rough recordings of just some of them, but yeah, they're sitting there waiting, so eventually I'll get them out. I actually have um an a cappella planned with um Megaphoric. She's oh. an amazing female vocalist. Mm-hmm. If you don't know about her, oh my god, go check her out. She's <laughs> amazing. She's, in my opinion, the best female vocalist in the fandom. In my opinion. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I won't argue anything on that either way. <laughs> in my opinion. My opinion. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just a, a big bad girl. That's all I do. But <laughs> we're going to do um, a an acapella together. We're planning that. So nice. I'm excited about that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Another thing that you do uh, prominently is the, I mean, the artwork. We've mentioned it a little bit. But... Um, how did you get? At what point did you decide? Did you decide? That's it. I'm just going to make my own art for this. Um, because it's I, usually not a combination that you see very much. It, usually, a person is a musician or they are an artist, and occasionally it will be both, but not to the extent that I see on you. Oh, I well, art's my my first love, my first talent. Mm-hmm. Singing is just something on the side that I did in the shower for <laughs> many years, all alone. <laughs> Um, like not properly just you know just jamming out in the shower to myself right and, and then but art is something i've worked out my entire life and okay okay um it's what i want to base my career on and mm. it's my first thing that i really worked hard at and you know i'm i'm not by any means the best i still have a long way to go i still have so much to learn but um i'm slowly improving mm-hmm. and um the fandom is just i find it's just such an amazing creative platform i couldn't help but um make artwork i was sketching as soon as i saw the first episode i was like really? oh my goodness i was just sketching along with it couldn't help it but it was a while before i was confident enough to put out my own stuff cuz <laughs> Everyone's so good. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I want to be good too. So I tried to put out stuff just slowly. But then once the music thing took off, I was like, oh, okay, I can just do my own album art then and just help yeah. and get my stuff out like that. So then that worked and that was good. So it seems to be coupling quite well together. Good sure. marriage of talents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would think so. I think so. Now, um, you, you, of course, you did your OC yourself. Yes. <laughs> what was what is the the cutie mark is an actual green feather. Yes. Um yeah. I love green and right. well we talked about the feather but um yeah, 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 yeah I love I love green but the whole um I guess the coloration of my whole OC is based off me okay. <laughs> cuz I'm a redhead uh-huh. and I have green eyes and I have freckles. So. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. <laughs> she's she's really just based off me. <laughs> and at the time I had my hair dyed in a Balayage, so I had lighter orange down the bottom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it's different now, but um, that was what I had at the time. So okay. I, I just made it based off me because I was like, eh, 
That'll do. <laughs> sure, why not? That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, uh, at one point you were doing uh, commissions for a while. Yes, I, I'm still doing them at the moment, but oh. I've kind of... I've stopped them for the moment because I have too many. Right. <laughs> so I had to say, no, um, I'm just taking the ones that I have now and trying to get through them before um, this 2013 kind of kicks off um, mm-hmm. for me because then I'll, I'll start to get busy because I am a uni student. So right, right. I unfortunately, you know, have a lot of stuff to do and my time gets spent you know, rare throughout the year as it gets I better. understand that, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. so I, I try to get them. I'm trying to get what I can finished now, and then I'm going to mm-hmm. close off for a while because it would be unfair for me to take um, take commissions later on and then not be able to fulfill them in a, an appropriate time. So. Very true, yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> hmm. But you are planning on reopening at some point? At some point, yes. Okay, um, okay. Probably, probably during the holidays, mm-hmm. my holidays, when I have some time. I'll be I'll be opening them up, but yeah, huh. I'm definitely trying to save. <laughs> I have a lot of right. things I need to save for. <laughs> well, I saw at one point on uh, one of your uh, things that you're saving up for PonyCon AU. Yes, I'm saving up for PonyCon AU, but not so much saving for that because that's mm. actually being held at my university. So, Whoa, go to- so I'm okay there. Um, yeah. I, I, I regularly visit the venue, so I was like, oh, that's just there. All right, then. You can give guided so, tours for like $5. Pretty much. <laughs> so I know the area. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all good with that. Um, mostly what I'm going to be doing is trying to save to go to BronyCon. Uh, that's going to be the big savings, so, because, of course, Australia, it's going to be thousands of dollars to get a flight there and accommodation and so I'm trying my very, very best, but um, I'm probably going to be doing something with the fandom, like doing extra commissions or mm-hmm. something at some point, or maybe a fundraiser, kickstart, something mm-hmm. to help me get over there because I, I literally just can't on my own because I'm, I'm a full-time student. I don't, like, I don't have that much money to throw around, so I'm, I'm trying to save, but I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have to do something to push the – push my little budget so it'll take me over there because I really want to go. <laughs> Believe me, I understand. And uh, for me, honestly, the, it was a big decision, Everfree Northwest or BronyCon, and it just worked out to Everfree Northwest is closer to me. Oh, it's, lucky. <laughs> well, Seattle versus um, the you know East Coast, it's, yeah, it, it's four time zones closer to me to go to Everfree Northwest. Ah, oh, so. that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. I'm not close by any means. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. <true. laughs> I mean, it's still a good 12, 13 hour flight, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's, well, I think it's, what was, I think it's nine hour flight as opposed to 12 and a half hour flight. So it's like, yeah, I, yeah, that's worth it. Yeah, that's, mm, I only, I only get a little bit of time off, so that'll have to be it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're see, a tech- I, I- I definitely want to say for um, BronyCon because it's it's in the time when I'm I won't have that much work to do. I'll be all right. I can make it in terms of scheduling. Right. But the only thing for me is money. But um, I'm gonna do my best because I really wanna I wanna perform and I wanna meet my friends because I've got so many friends that I really wanna meet. Yep. yep. And they're all in America. It's so far away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of only seeing them through Google Chat. I wanna touch their faces and hug them. <laughs> So, yeah. so everybody look for the girl wandering around BronyCon, touching everyone's face, and I'll be like, "It's you, it's you." <laughs> <laughs> you won't be able to miss me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have seen uh, you do have some pictures on your Deviant Art of cosplay. That oh you've done. yeah, <laughs> just the one. <laughs> just the one? Okay, okay, uh, just the one. But you did a Fluttershy cosplay for a bit. Yes, I did. We had a um. A nightmare night meet um, with the Brony group that I'm a part of, and so I dressed up as Fluttershy. <laughs> How was that? Was it uh, difficult? To f- did you go out and specifically get a Fluttershy set, or did you find like one piece here, one piece here, and put them together? Oh, it was very much mix match put together. Um, I had the ears and the wings made by a friend of mine. I had another friend do some embroidery for my cutie mark on the dress. I had to find the dress, mm-hmm. and I wanted the exact right 
kind of colour and every shade of yellow was wrong. Mm. So I scoured Sydney to look for a dress <laughs> and I found this one and then I found a cardigan off eBay and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... <laughs> I think the proper response is, yay. Oh, yay. 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 <laughs> so <laughs> I pretty much like put it all together from like all different things and mm-hmm. yeah, it was, oh, it was just, Oh, it was a mixed match of things to put together, but um, it turned out okay in the end. <laughs> I think it turned out great. How was the response to it? Oh, it was received very well. Um, although since we went to Sydney Botanical Gardens, there were a lot of you know public there, public people, right? And um, <laughs> a lot of the little girls thought that I was a fairy of some kind from a TV <laughs> show that I'm not quite aware of, and they're all like, oh, "I want pictures with you." Except one girl came up and she said, Fluttershy! And I'm like, yes, I love you, kid! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, yo, Fluttershy! And my friend was cosplaying as Slenderman. And oh so me and him were skipping through botanical gardens. <laughs> and, and people were like, it's Slenderman and Fluttershy! <laughs> and I was like, yes! <laughs> An so interesting we combination, guys. but if anybody can take <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> it was good. I was like, if anyone can befriend Slender Man, it would be Fluttershy. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I can imagine fun. <laughs> I can just imagine <laughs> Slender Man. He takes you. <gasps> no, no, it's okay. I don't have to take you. <clears throat> please stop. Please stop. Don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you mentioned it for a brief moment, but one of your passions is definitely birds. Yes, yes. My biggest love in life. <laughs> and recently you posted a YouTube video about the birds. <laughs> oh, yes. I included my birds. I couldn't help myself. They were oh, right no, there. No, no, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> I'm not, just, just I thought you'd like to talk about them a bit more. Oh, yes. Um. Well, I had them in their little night cages when I was – um. because they, they sleep inside because they're my babies. <laughs> And I was filming this little thing, and and they kept on. Um, they have little balls with bells in them. Okay. And my rainbow lorikeet Iris, she was ringing the bell and rolling it around and talking and chatting and making all these sounds. And I was like, oh, I have to include her because she's right there. Mm. And then I had to include my other birds. So <laughs> I was bringing in all my birds, and oh, they were just my babies, so I couldn't help but include them. And they're like my own little Fluttershy choir. <laughs> yeah, there you <laughs> so go. I love that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Where did your uh, passion for uh, birds start? Um. Well, I got my first bird when I was 12. Oh, actually, no, I lie. I got my first bird when I was uh, eight. I had a budgerigar named Swift. Okay. And he's, he's unfortunately passed away now. Oh. But um, I got my next bird when I was 12 and it was a hand raised cockatiel mm-hmm. and she's, her name's Kiki and she's still alive today. So she's wow. trooping on. She's a good bird. They live, um, they can live to up to like, you know, around 30 years. So oh, goodness. She, she, yeah, she, <laughs> they're hardy little birds. Oh, yeah, I believe it. Australia <laughs> makes them hardy. <laughs> I, I believe it. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, she's still around. And yeah. then I bred cockatiels for a number of years and sold them to my neighbors <laughs> and spread birds around my neighborhood wow. <laughs> and then um i was i've always wanted um a larger parrot and mm. i i they're so expensive and mm. i really wanted a, a well-bred you know hand-bred uh, hand-bred parrot of some kind i didn't mm-hmm. really care what but um then i saw that uh one of my cousin's friends on facebook was um giving away one of her birds because, um, her, well, her only bird, a parrot mm-hmm. that she'd kind of neglected and oh. she turned it into a screamer and a biter oh. and it was, she was very abused. And that was Pepita. And so mm-hmm. I adopted Pepita at the beginning of 2012 and mm-hmm. I trained the biting and the screaming out of her. So now, I mean, nice. when, when I first got her, I she would bite you the second you tried to put a hand in a cage. But obviously mm-hmm. in my video, now you can see I yes. hold her around and everything. And <laughs> yeah. So she's really agreeable now. She's a beautiful, beautiful bird, and she's so lovely and really sweet temperament. But And That's then nice. I was like, oh, I want another bird. <laughs> ah. So I've, now I've got like a 
Avery's and Avery's of them. But um, mm. then I got my Rainbow Laura Keat and I couldn't resist her. She's just too funny. She's <laughs> the most most personality and one little bird I've ever had. If you ever want a bird that is acts like a dog, mm-hmm. I suggest the Rainbow Laura Keat. <laughs> Interesting. It's, it's, it's like a feathered dog. She rolls on her back. She lets me scratch her belly. She's, oh, she barks like a dog. She jumps up and down. She uses her legs more than her wings. She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I would never expect it. Well, I, I, you know, I, I can kind of see that. In um, in some zoos, they do have rainbow lorikeet exhibits, and you can pay a little extra and get an itty-bitty plastic shot glass of, uh, like, uh, nectar. And you go in, and they'll like land all over your hand and drink it from you. It's like, oh, look at that! That's cool. Oh yes, I love that they're nectar birds because <laughs> they smell like sugar. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you push them really close and you put your nose in their feathers and you're sniffing, they smell like sugar. <laughs> so it's the ultimate like it's like a rainbow lorikeet, so it's a little bit of rainbow dash, <laughs> and then it smells like sugar, so it's and it's hyper, so it's a little bit of Pinkie Pie. There we go. So it's like the ultimate mix. <laughs> yeah. It just has to demand fancy hats, and then you got rarity. And <laughs> oh wow, I wonder if I could dress up my lorikeet. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be my next quest. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I'll be um, sh- I'll be sure to share the results on on YouTube. <laughs> we had um, we had one uh, well, I had two parakeets in my family's house, but they did not take well to our house. And they became evil. Oh, they, they, I, I can sympathize. <laughs> we tried to be as nice as we could to them, but the, they would never learn to try and communicate with us. But they did learn how to make the sound that a sparrow makes. And oh. they would do that because we placed them next to the window and sparrows would be flying outside and they would, as loud as they could, make a sparrow's call. And two or three times we would hear, bam! Because the sparrow tried to come in where it heard another sparrow, and it would hit the window and actually die. Oh my goodness! So these birds that were in our house were actually tempting sparrows to try and come inside, and were like, stop doing that! It's not cool! Do you know what? I completely understand, because my iris, the rainbow lorikeet, mm. she makes barking noises because she's copied the dogs. Yes. She lures the dogs in. She's like, oh, yeah, I'll be your best friend, like barking, chirping, making all these beautiful sounds. The dogs come up, push their nose through the wire to sniff her. She bites them on the nose. <laughs> and, and the poor dogs, they never learn, and they keep on going back. <laughs> I, I did have a, a – there was a family friend who had a um, – I, I can't remember the type of bird, but it was a bird that was capable of speech. And it was just as mischievous because uh, the dog, when it was very young, was not so well behaved. and But then it got older and it was much better behaved. But the parrot the, – uh, I'll call it parrot because I really don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> the parrot. <laughs> the parrot had learned to say, come here, doggy, come here, doggy, come here, come here. And as soon as the dog would come in the room, bad doggy. Bad dog. Oh, and the dog like so... whine and slink out of the room, and then it come here, doggy. Come here, doggy. And dog oh. come in, bad dog. Bad dog. Oh, that's that's so cruel, but so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I think we kind of encouraged the bird to do that just because it was so funny. But we were nice to the dog afterwards. Like, let's go play outside, and the bird can't play outside. Just you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Actually, you know, uh, the uh, my neighbor next to me, uh, pets are not allowed in Japanese apartments, but we have a landlord who turns a blind eye to it because she has a cat. Ah. So I have my cat, but um, actually the apartment next to me, I've seen him out walking a few times, and he has a parakeet that rides on his hat as he walks around the city. Oh, I do that too. I take do my you? birds for walks. Oh, yeah. I take them. I have one on each hand and I walk around and they all come with me and we visit the wild birds and everywhere. It's really fun. <laughs> Is it? Huh. I He he does that a few times. I know at least one of his, his birds has flown away because there were some bird missing posters up for a while. I, oh. hope he, I hope he got it back because the posters were missing uh, a few days later, but I really don't know. But yeah, I thought it was interesting. I just one of the first days I was here, I see a guy walking past my apartment. He had a bird on his head. It was a <laughs> brightly colored blue bird on his head. 
I must say, I get a few weird looks, but most people are really like, wow, because they're so colorful. Yeah. You can't walk past them and not notice them. But oh, um, yeah. Absolutely. my birds, they just never leave me. They're so, <laughs> they're so attached to me that they're like, nah, I don't feel like flying away. So I just take them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would think that for the most part, it's pretty safe, just not totally. Oh, I have to watch sometimes because we have a lot of um, hawks and falcons that scan the area because my birds are extremely loud. Um, <laughs> so they know that my birds live there. Right. So they hover over. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I have to be careful. But um, <laughs> I know which times they go hunting now because they go in, in special special um, special times and, like, right. they almost take, like, little shifts during the day. It's really interesting, but um, I know when to look for them now. That's nice. I'm glad you haven't lost any, because that would be just terrible. <laughs> it would be. I would be extremely devastated. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's, I mean, yeah, it, it's a pet. <laughs> it Very few phrases tick me off as much as the phrase, it's only an animal, shut up. Oh, my animals and my birds and everything, they're like my children. <laughs> uh, this, honestly, if it was between a stranger and my pet, I'd be like like falling off a cliff and I had to save one, I'd be like, my pet? <laughs> and goodbye, stranger. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm too attached. I like animals. Sometimes I like animals better than people. <laughs> well, I can totally agree with that, yeah. Uh, occasionally you'll get a bad-tempered animal, but even the nice-tempered animals, they're honest with you. <laughs> so you know oh, they're still get them. honest. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. They're very Applejack. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, a question that I ask in all my interviews, and I'm curious to your response to it. Is there one specific scene or line in all of My Little Pony that defines you as a brony? Oh, my goodness. Um. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think just the... <sighs> Yay! <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> I can't go past it. Um, I I really love it. I, I love that it's it's just quiet joy. I love that. <laughs> All right. I, I feel That's, that's my favorite. My favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> A bit cliche, but I know. But no, no. I mean, that's <laughs> totally valid. It's totally valid. It, you know, it's what you choose. <laughs> I, I find it interesting how many people really, really like that scene, the big inhale, yay. But not many people remember the um, the other big inhale that she does in season one in uh, Green's Not Your Color when she says, I'm so angry I could scream. <gasps> Very few people oh. use that as their favorite one. <laughs> and I think it's a good dichotomy to hear both of them. She's quiet in celebration and quiet in anger. I know. I love that about her. <laughs> <laughs> so are you thinking of ever doing another cosplay at some point? Like if you get to go to BronyCon, are you going to bring, bring Fluttershy or are you going to try for a different pony? Um, I think I probably I probably couldn't go past um, um, my OC or Fluttershy. I think mm-hmm. they're just – I feel that they're – my defining points in the fandom because I feel I am very Fluttershy, but I, I also I really love my OC, so right. I like those two. But um, I don't know. I, I I think I suit them best. I may I may for fun try some other characters, but mm-hmm. it's expensive <laughs> trying to put together a good costume. Yes. So um, yeah, with time, yes, but um, for the moment, just Fluttershy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, are there any other uh, projects that you'd like to plug? Something coming up that we should know about? We mentioned the Aviators compilation coming up soon. Um. Yes. Well, there's there's Aviators. Um. Hmm, what else have I got? Um. I've got an. Eventually, we'll be, I'll be bringing out um an EP with Naysayer. Okay. Um. Really ambient kind of tracks. Mm-hmm. Um. It's it's his style and I, I really enjoy it. So um, it's gonna be that. Um, I'm gonna be doing more stuff with Rhyme Flow eventually. I okay. really want to get onto that. Um, I was gonna do a collaboration with Sim and I probably will, but he's mm. going to the army. So yeah. <laughs> so I have to wait. Um, <laughs> and then I have a collaboration um, with Tombstone that oh, nice. I'm thinking about doing. 
so I'm really nice. excited about that. Um, oh, there's so many. I have a list. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> well, okay, let's do other half of that. Are there any artists that you would really like to work with but haven't gotten a chance to yet who might be listening or be told of this when it airs? Oh, ho, ho. Um, Can't guarantee mm, it, but, you know, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Mm. Um, hmm. Oh, I'm on the spot. Oh. <laughs> Actually, you're into the spotlight. <laughs> True. Oh, that's the name of my show. I think, like, a huge dream would be, like, Pinkie Pie Square or someone like that. Like, uh, yeah. that would be, like, oh, that would be cool. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's a long shot. <laughs> I think that's me just dreaming. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, there's there's a lot of people. I can't remember their names all right now, but I know there's a lot of people I really want to work with. Mm-hmm. I, I also like working with um, newer people because right. you know I I like to because you know people gave me a shot in the beginning and and I like to kind of do the same thing. But, Very true. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I wish I had names in my head. I I would give a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. Okay, well, everybody, uh, we have been speaking with uh, Brony musician slash artist uh, Feather. Um, please be sure to follow her on DeviantArt and her YouTube page. And is there a Tumblr? Yes, there's a Tumblr, there's, there's Tumblr. Bandcamp, there's SoundCloud. It's all in my YouTube account, so okay. you can find all the links there. All right, wonderful. Uh, Feather, thank you so much for coming by to speak with us today. You're completely welcome. Yay. Everybody be sure to check out Feather, and uh, this has been Into the Spotlight with Osaka Jack on Everfree Network. We'll see you next time.